Hello, my name is John Spangle. Welcome to my YouTube channel. <clears throat> As always, I explain uh, why I came up with the title of uh, Underground for my uh, channel. I was thinking of something to title it, not just John Spangle. People would be like, what's that? You know, who's that? But I was thinking about the underground church in present-day China and Iran, where a lot of people would just put their lives on the line just to uh, be a Christian and carry a Bible, have a Bible in the procession. Uh I've been doing these videos for a while, and uh, after my cancer, I decided I'm going to do something. At the time, I couldn't uh, get out and physically go places. Now, after time, I'm able to. I've been going to the gym and able to uh, uh, deal with some of the pain and health issues I have. Uh, so I'm able to get out more. So I'm looking at uh, actually going back to a church, or a church I've attended in the past a few times. And I look forward to uh, being able to go worship God there with some pe good godly people. It's taken a long time to, it's been a journey back. But I started these videos because I love talking about God. I've had issues. I've talked about, I've used myself as an example uh, to bring people to God, to study God's word. That does not mean there's not been disagreements on a few things. But throughout, God has helped me uh, so much in, in my life and uh, just recently, I was able to get a loan on the house. I talked to the company that's been working on this house, and you heard in my previous videos my situation where a year ago a tree fell in this house, and it's been a year, and they're still not done with the house. Uh, actually, I got the money now. I got different contractors going to come in and, and fix the pipes in my house so I can have uh, sh take showers here. Because we've been going to my daughter, me and my son's been going to my daughter's to even be able to take a shower. Because the pipes, you know, busted and everything. So, I mean, it was practically a whole new roof on the house. Gutted the house out. There's a lot of work to be done. Uh, there's a lot that they still haven't done. Kitchen floor. Uh, I'm going to have someone else come in and fix it. Because God allowed me, through a situation, I was able to get a loan on this house. And this house isn't done. And you can see the door behind me. There's no molding around it. Put the walls up. Didn't put molding up in the the house throughout. Uh, there's areas where they were supposed to take, tear down ceiling and like in the hallway and they just put four or five coats of paint to cover up the, the black mold that was there which is, you know, hazardous. There's a lot of issues I've had with this company. <laughs> it's crazy. And I got I got to talk to someone just a recent that uh, just left the company. So he liked me and he, he told me he is apologetic for everything. He started for the company just a few months ago and only lasted a few months and that's it. And I said, that that's good because as a godly man, you can't work for people that are uh, not honest. But he said, you'd be surprised how many. And I, I said, I'm not going to get you involved in anything. But on the side, he told me, he said, there's there's many homes that this company has that they, they're a year behind. You're not the only one. Well, I, like, I know because the storm last year, the, the front tree in my yard, big part of it fell on my house. In my backyard, I had the huge tree and a branch fell on my neighbor's house. And they just finished their house like two weeks ago. And it was just one small area of the house. I mean, a room uh, did a lot of damage and stuff, but that, what they had to do, it just, uh, it was a blessing for them because the, the tree just went straight like a spear right through, but no one was in that bedroom when it happened. So, which gives me an opportunity to talk to and witness to my neighbors because they're a lesbian couple, and I'm able to talk to them about God. And one, one woman has, has actually asked me questions, which is good. The other woman can't stand me. She wants me to die. So <laughs> she don't, you know, they're a married couple legally. So, you know, she introduces this as my my wife. I'm like, well, that can't be that way because you're, you're two women in a nice way. <laughs> so, uh, but things happen. I wanted to make this video. I've, I've been sick the whole last few days. And so I haven't been able to uh, make a video. And I'm sorry, I'm shaking the table there. And so today I'm in between doing stuff and and uh, I just want to make this uh, quick to inspire people. I titled it God Uses Imperfection for, for Perfection. But at the same time, I want to get caught up on a few things. I do believe we're in the season of the rapture of the church. Some people, you know, attack me, make comments. Well, you said it's going to happen the Feast of Trumpets. I said it's a high watch area. But, you know, that's the next feast we were looking at. But, uh. And then someone made a comment a while back against one of the pastors I listen to a, a lot. And it's J.D. Farag. And this man is over in England, and he has a YouTube channel. 
and he talked about date setting against date setting and things like that, which uh, makes, you know, how bad it is, how sinful of date setter is. Uh, not really, because I commented there, and when I comment, it's it's not to attack somebody, it's, it's to give instruction or scripture for they can go and see, because I could be wrong on things. I accept that I could be wrong. And what I told him was, you know, someone who's, there's a lot going on. You know, we know that the, that the, the body of Christ knows we are not in darkness. I, I've said it in my previous videos where I've used scripture in Thessalonians. Thessalonians, it was, the Thessalonians, uh, the church in Thessalonia was a new church. There were some new convents or people that were born again Christians there. And Paul wrote two letters back to those people. He had just left them and he wrote back. There was issues right after he left. And he wrote back explaining to them that uh, uh, the, the things that they were being taught. Uh, he was teaching these people. If you look on the scriptures and look at it, he was teaching these people. And I'm sorry, I had thoughts in my mind when my mind wanders and goes. I have issues with memory. Uh, when you have things that, uh, things going on, but he was teaching, the, and realize these are new Christians, and he's teaching them about the rapture of the church back then. So the rapture of the church is not a, a, a new thing that just came out a few years ago. People try to tell you that. People have not studied. Rapture is not in the Bible, therefore it's made up. No, it's English. I have always go into, you know, when it says caught up, that's English for harpazo, which is Greek. That's the, the text was written in. And rapio, uh, I, I pronounce it wrong, but it's rapio. It's Latin for harpazo. Rapture English for rapio. That's where we get the word rapture. And it's throughout the Bible. And a lot of people teach it's not true. I've had someone comment in one of my, my videos that there is no rapture date. And then it's going to be... Uh, uh, talking about the 5D, talking about the uh, uh, vibrations and how people are going to start disappearing all over and all this. I'm like, dude, this is just new wave. Uh, I'm at new age that you're, you're talking about. And that was, you know, that's foretold uh, about strong delusion. So God will send a strong delusion by people like you. So I called him out. Uh, when something's obvious, then y'all call out, call out to that person because I'm not trying to argue with that person but I don't want someone else to look at the videos and to misunderstand something you know the, the videos I have here are for instruction uh, it's hard I'm in the flesh to be a, not to be opinionated I'm trying to keep from that so much but I look at where I come up with my uh, ideas and things like that I show through scripture where I'm getting that now, something I may put out and I may disagree uh, four or five months from now or look at it differently, I'm learning. I'm 58 years old. I'm still learning God's Word. But there's a lot going on. There's a lot. To, the rapture is the next event that's going to take place. It takes the world by surprise. But as Paul taught to those, those people in Thessalonian, the Thessalonians that we are of the light. We are not of the darkness. We know when the day is approaching. And here's my buddy Patch. He's, he looks rough. I'm getting him back in the vet. He has a skin condition. shows up about this time every year, and he just itches, and he's licking all of his fur off. And, and unfortunately, I ain't had the money till this week to get him in. So, a matter of fact, after I make this video, I'm going to call in and with the vet and get him in there and get us. He gets a shot once a year, and it helps uh, so much with it. I don't know what's in it, but it's not that bad expensive, but... It's not still not cheap. So he's scratching all over himself and he looks a little rough. Our pets are our children. I love them just as much as I love, love my kids. Kids are all adults now. But, um, and there goes my train of thought. He just, boy, I tell you what, he just come up there and just got old dad messed up. There, I was talking about uh, previous videos, different things. I apologize. Uh, but I'm just out there trying to uh, do, do God's word and talk about it. We're looking at, yes, the time is short. We do know the rapture is going to take place at any moment. And that's the reason why people are kind of going crazy right now. I'm excited. Uh, when I went to that man's page that was talking about my mind, 
JD for all talking against him. Uh, that man for, and I, I still am subscribed to his channel because there's a lot of things that are very good. This guy disagreed on something, but he was talking about these date setters. JD Frog was not setting a date. He was talking about what if, what if on this day, and and people are quick to say, you know, well he set dates and and all that. He doesn't. A lot of times when he, if you watch his videos, he talks about he's not uh, like dogmatic or something like where it's going to be there here no matter what. But we know the time is close, and so. Uh, I put on that page that anybody who has like really has a problem with with uh you know that's hurting their faith but then they're not strong in the faith and they're not studying studying the word because you're not supposed to I want you to to take what I talk about and then think about it on your own and study the scripture for yourself. I don't want you to take just what I say. You know, I appreciate the comments. I really do. It, it makes a lot the reason I do this. I'm getting the word out, but he just loves his chest being itched, scratched, I mean. But uh, the point is, it's to study. It's to motivate to study, to, to know God's word. We are commanded to talk to people. We're commanded. To, I mean, you love God. What are you going to do? You're going to talk about God, you know, and that, that's, that's everything to me. And so, uh, but anybody that a date comes and goes and, they're, and then they're upset, well, you there, you get a crown of, what I put on his page is you get a crown of righteousness for anxiously waiting. I want that crown so I could take it and lay it at Jesus. It's not for me. I want it to give something back. I want to lay that crown at the feet of Jesus, thanking him for the sacrifice he made. Because I'm not saved by anything I could have done. Nothing saves me, and I'll explain that hand here. I'm only saved by the gift of grace. So to get into it, and if my buddy starts making noises here, he has a permanent sinus problem. This cat has been a blessing. Uh, he, uh, I got him. He was sick. He was missing a tail. He got bit by a snake. He's a bobtail. I'll call him a wild tiger. Bingo. I call him a bingo tiger. I named him Patches. He has a messed up eye. He's been sick all his life. But uh, he's a godsend. He's awesome. There's a lot of love between us. And I thought I was dying of cancer. Uh, it's a miracle I'm alive. When I talked to the cancer doctor, I said, I'm in your, in your top 10. And he said, no, John, after over, I think, 25 years, 27 years, you're number one. They didn't expect me to live, and I lived. And unfortunately, I have a permanent cosmic bag I complain about because of it, and I have stomach issues, but I survived it. But uh, we lay, lay together, and he'll come up on my lap and just lay there. He does it. It's kind of hard to write notes. He does this a lot, but... We'll come up when I had my cancer and I couldn't move around for uh, my chemo. I was taking five chemos at one time after taking the original chemo and, and uh, uh, radiation treatments. Then after my surgery for months, like 10 months, I had I was on five different chemos and I was just weak as a kitten. He just lay here and I lay on top of me. So pretty awesome. God uses imperfection for perfection. Genesis 121. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created he, him. Male and female created them. So at the beginning, we were created perfect, without flaw. Genesis chapter 2, verses 22 through 24. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubs and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep away the tree of life. Throw something in there. I did a previous video, oh, well, that's over a year ago, uh, where I believe the uh, east of Eden is actually uh, Jerusalem. Earth was covered by flood. He had four rivers. The Tigris, Euphrates, I, I, I've been to those two, but the other two, uh, when I was in the Middle East, but the other two, the Gihon and the Pison, we don't know where they were at. I don't believe that the current Euphrates and Tigris are in the exact location. For some reason, people get that. They get that stuck in their head. Well, that's where at least two of the rivers where they were. Why? The whole world was covered by flood people. Just because they use two names of the four doesn't mean they're in the exact same spot. In that area, yes, I know it's in that area, but it's not... Why are you thinking it's the exact same spot? That's just people. 
Um, but I believe Jerusalem is east of Eden, the uh, promised land. That's where Eden was, and east of Eden where Jerusalem is. And the reason why there's so much fighting over the Temple Mount, there is an area it always talked about in the garden where Adam walked with God. And my theory, which I could be far off on this, is that that's where Adam walked with God in the evening. And we sinned, and because of the sin, God has always tried to bring us back into a loving relationship. That's all he ever wanted. He didn't make robots because he wanted us to love him and worship him. And he, numerous times he says, you love me, worship me, and I'll take care of every need that you really need. Not the flesh wants, but what you really need. And so, uh, my buddy's falling asleep now. You gonna go to sleep? Yeah. And so, uh, he's bringing that relationship back to us. I always throw up there, I believe, where the, the uh, crosses, where Jesus Christ made the new blood covenant, where his blood sacrifice covered our past, present, future sins. That if we believe on him, have faith, in Jesus, we are saved and if we're repentant of our sins because there's nothing we can do. We can't buy your way into heaven. You know, there's nothing we could do unless we boast. And to be honest with you, people are predestined for God. And there's a video I explain on that because I try to explain to somebody the difference between predestined and, and freedom of will. And so I, I get more into... Uh, study I was looking at there could be wrong because that's a tough subject for me uh, to look at uh, to give an understanding for predestined why you bother talking to people about God it's what my older son says he don't believe in God so um, you still have free will well, you have free will to, to give yourself to God if it's meant to be I want you to do it so there's things there that I may be off on and that's the reason why I say go to that because I look forward to comments if I'm wrong on something that's how I learned. But in Genesis 3, 22 through 24, we lost our salvation. Well, yeah, we uh, immortal. Uh, we lost being uh, death came in where uh, Satan said it wouldn't. And it did. He just at that moment, we didn't die. But death came to us because of sin, because that's the wages of sin is death. Only salvation through Jesus Christ can save us. So Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 22, that's where I was wanting to go with the rest of this. And it says, And ye hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that's Satan, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And that's talking about Satan. Among whom also we all had our conversation in past times and the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others but God who is rich in mercy for his great love where he loved us even when he, we were dead in sins hath quickened us together with Christ by grace we are saved bringing us together through Jesus Christ and that's Jews and Gentiles and we are saved by his grace and hath raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show that exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Jesus, I'm sorry, through Christ Jesus. For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. A lot of, I have a lot of friends who are Catholics, and they're big about faith by works. And I tell them that's nothing. You know, I don't believe the Catholic Church is a godly church and never was. They took uh, uh, certain holidays and tried to make it their push their their viewpoint on it and and took and mixed pagans pagan holidays with others other things like uh, Christmas. You know, I talked to my daughter the other day about Christmas, and uh, I'm like, you know, when with you kids, we always celebrated Christmas. I, I did tradition. I did it like everybody else. But as I'm an old man, I wish I hadn't. I was like, why, Dad? I said, for one thing, Christmas is in September. We got proof that Jesus Christ was born in the month of September. I don't remember the date. Uh, but, uh, well, what's crossing my mind is because we have the, uh, 
the revelation sign that first came up around the birth of Christ. It came up again in 2017, September 23rd, 2017. And six years later, at this time, it's again, there's a sign before a sign. And I believe that's talking about the rapture of the church. But also, there was something, it just, in my mind, sticks there. And I could be wrong. Like I said, I, I have memory issues because of some health problems. But, and my speech, obviously, I have some trouble with my speech. But I was thinking it was around December, it was around September 23rd was supposed to be the birthday of Christ. So that's just a tidbit. And like I said, I could be wrong uh, up there. That, uh, I mean, even when I talked earlier about Jerusalem and, you know, the Temple Mount being where I thought Adam walked with God. Uh, actually, there was two archaeologists when I made that video. After I was making that video or during it, I mentioned them because they were, were thinking the same thing and they were showing something through archaeology. And I was like, I was totally excited. So, but anyways, I digress. That doesn't mean I was correct, but at least that shows that someone else had the idea, and they were backing it up with proof, not just some idea, looking at scripture that I could be, you know, really wrong on. I get excited when I talk about heaven, because we're about to be there, and I look forward to uh, seeing God and seeing uh, corrected, and, and I look forward to being with my true family. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcised, uncircumcision, by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands. That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who are sometimes were off are made nigh by the blood of Jesus. That's combining the Gentiles with the Jews. For he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle, and partition us, having abolished in his flesh enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself a twain, one new man, so making peace. And that he might reconcile both unite God in one body by the cross, having slain an enmity thereby. And came and preached peace to you which were for off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore we are no more strangers and foreigners than fellowship, fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, and whom all the building fitly framed together, groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. We're all grafted in. And the purpose I was trying to make here, or viewpoint trying to put out is we're all important. So people out there that, that are, that are attempting to do YouTube channel, get the word out for God, encourage them to keep doing it. Uh, those people, <laughs> my buddy's already eating, drinking, so he's making all kinds of noises. Those people that are in the right way. I mean, there's some people who are trying to bring attention to themselves. So may that may they, you know, correctly. But those people that are trying to get the word out, it, keep doing it. You have to look at certain things. I use uh, King David, for example, or he's a better man than me. But David had done some things in his life. You know, he had lusted over Bathsheba, had an affair with Bathsheba. She got pregnant. He had her husband come in and tried to hide the pregnancy by having uh, relations with his wife. But it, since this men were on the battlefield, the captain was a good man, so he didn't go in. He slept outside his own house, so he wouldn't be tempted to be with his own wife in an intimate way. And then he let uh, Saul David, King David, before he went back to the battlefield, and he questioned him about it because David was like, you know, man, I, I wanted him to be in her, so they wouldn't know she'll be, she was pregnant by him. And he went, and uh, so David told his men that in a certain area of battle, pull back, and they did, and that captain was killed. So he he lusted after a woman, committed adultery with that woman, and committed premeditated murder. Yet, through all that weakness of David, David was forgiven by God. 
And God may comment later that David was a man after his own heart. And I know you're like, wait a minute, he's done some vile things. We're all vile. I'm a vile sinner. I do not deserve heaven. There's nothing I could do to deserve heaven. But I am secure in my faith, and I'm secure in knowing that I'm going to heaven, not because John Spangle's a great man. Far from it. I'm more of a simple man and I have issues. But I'm grafted into this, this family because through Jesus Christ, I'm going to be made perfect. And David was remorseful for everything he'd done. And in the process, the first child he had with Bathsheba, Solomon was the second child. Later, they married. But, hey, buddy, but the first child died. And people were upset because David was mourning. And as the custom, he was he was tearing his, wringing his clothes and putting ashes all over and just praying to God constantly while the baby was sick. And then when the baby died, he walked in and asked for a bath and be washed, and they washed him and everything, and everybody's like, he lost his mind. Now he's mourning, and he explained to the people, because of his strong faith, he was wanting not, he didn't, he yearned for the baby to live, you know. He wanted that child to live. But once the child died, he knew that that child was going to be with God in heaven. And he knew that child would be in heaven for when David got there. Right now, I have... Uh, Three grandkids in heaven. My daughter had three miscarriages, unfortunately. And she has my grandson. That's nine years old. Going to be ten in a few months. But there are three grandkids I have up in heaven that uh, are waiting for Papa to come up and see him. You know, so that's something I look, I look forward to. And so uh, we also look at, you know, well, like Adam, he, he, he sinned. Knowingly, you know, Eve, Eve was uh, uh, seduced. I mean, she was, uh, she believed the lie where Adam knew better, but he did it. Later, repented, and so he's forgiven. There's, you know, they talk about Noah. Noah, after he, the flood, he uh, unfortunately drank too much wine and got drunk. So he may, but he wasn't, uh, you know, it's not like he was punished for getting drunk, and I did a video about that, about him, because people make a big deal. They try to put out something sexual about Noah and his son Ham. He had Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Ham walked in there, found his father naked, drunk from drinking too much wine, and then uh, someone had put a book out saying that there's a sex, because he had uh, punished more than one, cursed more than one generation. Because of what Ham did. Well, what Ham did was he went to his two brothers to talk about their father. Traditions back then were, you know, a lot of times people study and do things, especially here in America. They, they, they're Americans. They live like Americans, so they, they think like American. They're not thinking like a Middle Eastern person, so it's, it's hard for them to comprehend, uh, truly comprehend the Bible. It's like a rich person. It's harder for a rich person to be saved than a poor person. How many times in that rich person's life are they going to be praying to God? They've got everything, you know. They're happy with their life. It's compared to a poor person that's struggling. Where are they going to go to? They're going to go to God. That's just why God allows suffering. And you think, well, he's not a great God if he allows suffering. Well, if he didn't allow suffering, when are you going to go to him? He wants you to go to him, you know. If you're happy with your life and everything's hunky-dory going on, then you're like, well... I like my life here. I mean, I, I, I could, maybe when I'm real old, I'll go to heaven. But right now, if I, you know, that's not the way to be. I look forward to what I have because, you know, I still have issues over this house. I still like to take a shower in this house. Eventually, like I said, I was blessed with that money. I was, where I was able to go to in my mind goes back and forth. And I apologize was the, the man came and gave, the bank had to have appraisal on the house. I thought, well, they're not, I'll do it. They're not going to give me nothing. And man turned out to be uh, uh, living there here, active in church. He knew my story. And he's like, John, we're going to praise this house like it's done. The attentions, I said, it's not, these guys, I'm going to have to take them, I would have to take them to court to try to get this done, and they ain't going to happen. He said, John, the attentions are, they're going to get it done, so we're going to praise it like it's done. And I didn't ask for a large amount. 
they appraised the house. I couldn't believe it at 117,000. And so I asked for about 38, 35 to 38, because it was like a couple thousand to do all the paperwork. And so, because I have a lot of work to be done, I got to relearn the gas lines, the gas lines, and then the water heater, that's going to be over 5,000. Uh, the tree is the tree that fell. And my buddy Pat just, yeah. The tree that fell in the backyard, it's so large. And that was just a branch that fell in my neighbor's yard. But to get back there and stuff, I had to get a crane to get that one. And I didn't have the money for it. So that's, that was estimated at 5,500. Now, the tree in front, it's so large to cut down. And I got a different group coming in and do it. And it's estimated that uh, they gave me an estimate of 2,500 to cut that tree down. And that's after half of the tree fell in my house. It's, still, it's a huge tree. And the tree beside it, uh, that's an additional 1,000 or 1,200 uh, because you know, we cut, we cut that tree down. And then I've got projects in here. I've got, I've got to, uh, the flooring. They didn't do the flooring in the kitchen. And it's, I can't, I gave my daughter my washer and dryer because I can't use that floor. Uh, so I got to get new flooring. cut. So there's projects. It adds up. Unfortunately, it adds up. So, because I, after I caught up on my bills, I lived so long. We lived in a, almost a year in a, uh, hotel so I had to get credit cards to eat the price of food is crazy and so I had large debt so I got that paid off uh, insurance company didn't give me much so I went and I had good credit well the interest rate luckily I did the uh, 90 day where you get paid off in 90 days to save the interest so I paid three thousand on furniture and saved for interest seventy one hundred dollars I mean yeah seven thousand one hundred dollars it's what the interest would have been if I didn't get that done in 90 days. So it's a blessing from God. But even if I didn't get the loan, it'd be no big deal. I've just been in the red for a few more months until the rapture. Because I really believe the rapture is around the corner. But God gave me a blessing. Here, I'll take some stress off of you before I come and get you. In seven days, God created this world. Actually, six days, I'm sorry. And the seventh day, he rested. Jesus Christ has been up 2,000 years preparing this place in heaven. Can't imagine how beautiful that's going to be. Because we look at the world now after sin, after everything, after the flood. And there's so beautiful in areas. But this is not the original way originally the earth was, was looking. The beauty of it would even be greater. So I wanted to put this out there, explain some things, show you through the scripture that an imperfect person like me, God can use to do great things, and God can do the same for you. And I apologize, I know it's not entertaining, I'm not very good at that. But there was more I was wanting to say, but like I said, for a couple days I've been sick, and and uh, I, I, I just didn't feel like writing more notes. And uh, I wasn't able to put out uh, what I originally wanted. There's more stuff there, and more things I want to put out, but I'm still recovering. So... But I had one blessing. I, I went to the doctor yesterday and, and I had issues with uh, soldiers. You've been overseas, you come back, all kinds of cancers and different things. And I've been having issues with my kidneys, but everything's looking like it's it's doing better. So I got that taken care of. My buddy here is going to take a nap. So he's resting now and happy. God bless you. I look forward to meeting you in the clouds because that time is soon and being with my family. Until then, it's very important to get the word out. I do believe in predestination, but we still got to get the word out uh, to those people to get them to God because, uh, as I said, I could be looking wrong on that. Either way, I believe that those people that accept God before the rapture will be raptured up. But those people left behind, uh, they won't. As it says in Thessalonians, they... they uh, would not believe in the truth, so God's going to extend God himself. It says God will send a strong delusion. If our creator sends you a delusion, it's so strong, you don't even know you're deluded. A lot of Christian groups out there are putting out there, and it bothers me, that they're putting out Left Behind, the Left Behind series, Left Behind notes for their family members. Oh, you don't get it. Those family members left behind are going to hell. Open your eyes. Look at the scripture, what it says. 
Those people are going to hell. That's a disservice these ministers are teaching in churches. You know, fire brimstone type. Don't go to hell. Jesus talks so much about hell. You don't want to go there. So get to your family members. Tell them about God. God will bring them to him if they're part of the family. But he's going to use you to do it. That's what we are. That's why I was born in this time. To go out, talk to people, talk about God. Uh, make these videos. Everybody, I encourage other people to make videos. Get the word out. If you could just reach one person. I started this four years ago to reach one person. And so, I, I you know, and so that's uh, the whole purpose of everything is, is to get out there. Now I'm wanting to meet, meet more than one person. I want to, I'm at reach more than one person. I want to get so many out there. And so, uh, uh, the love for God is, is so great. God is everything to me, everything in my life. And to get people to come to God is just... And you're looking for the rapture and excited. Don't let people take your excitement away because you get that crown of righteousness. They can't put it at Jesus' feet if they're not excited about the rapture. If you're excited and looking for the rapture, you can put it at his feet. You believe God's going to come at a certain date? You believe God's going to a time frame? We don't know the day or the hour, but we can know when it's close. Mm -hmm. Feast of Trumpets, it was a, a good watch area. Uh, the other feast, Day of Atonement, Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, God's going to answer these feasts. Jesus is going to solve something on these, these feast dates. He fulfilled the first four. He's going to fulfill the last three. But you're not only looking at the rapture, you're looking at the second coming. Coming, You're looking at the beginning. Tabernacles could be the whenever the uh, Millennium Kingdom starts. Uh, that could be Tabernacles. Uh, Feast of Trumpets could be the Second Coming. Uh, Day of Atonement could be the beginning of the Millennium Kingdom. The end of the Millennium Kingdom, I'm sorry with my speech, where it starts eternity could be at the Tabernacles. I mean, there's, there's so many different things, you know. So it's exciting to look and see how things play out. You know, it's good to say I don't know I don't know all the answers, but I know enough. And after I explained the motor son, I, I don't have all the answers, but I know God. And I love God, and thanks so much for God. So, God bless you, and I'll stop rallying, and hopefully uh, I can put out a, a, a better, more informative video next time. Thank you.